Thank you. Uh, a very warm welcome to I Write. My name is Nicola Meehan. I'm a music journalist and this amazing man beside me drives tanks, which we may discuss later. But more importantly, he has, among other things, been a percussionist for Warsaw, right. Joy Division, yeah. New Order, the other two, yeah. the Sunshine Valley Dance Band, yeah. <laughs> and more. And he's also just written this brilliant part one of his memoir, Record, Play, Pause, Confessions of a Post-Punk Percussionist. Please give him a very warm welcome again. He is Peter Boyle. of how the event will work. Stephen and I will chat about the book and music and much besides for maybe about 40 minutes or so. Um, after which, you're very welcome to ask some questions. We've got an hour in total. So get your questions loaded up uh, in advance. If you don't ask too many, you'll have more from me, so you're better asking your own. Um, I should just say briefly, I guess, Stephen, that before we begin, this is volume one. Yeah, that's right. So this kind of takes us without any spoilers. <laughs> Yeah. Um, to the point that New Order just come into being. Just started, yeah. That's so right. I'm going to, when I'm asking you questions, I think I, I'm just going to kind of cover to that point, which is yeah. this in the book. But, um, you know, if you've got questions beyond that, I'm sure yeah, you'll be yeah, happy yeah. to, any, to mention anything, it. So yeah, really anything goes. Don't feel told. limited in any way. There you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so to kick us off, the fact that I even have this, yeah. I know it's wonderful, was a rare treat. Tell us a little bit about how the book came into being and I guess when and why you decided to start sort of telling your version of events and writing it down. Uh, well, I've always wanted to write a book. Well, I always felt there was a novelist inside me. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> there wasn't. I, I tried very hard. To, to, not yet. Not yet, no. no I, but I, I thought, well, I, I, I love reading. So yeah. I thought, writing is just the same thing backwards. So I enjoyed it, but like, there, was, there was never time to finish it. Or it was just totally half-baked. You'd go away, do some gigs, come back read your masterpiece and it's like this is rubbish who are these people what are they doing i'm, I'm buying this and I'm just so in the end i thought I'd stick to what you know even though it's a bit not doing a mem rock memoir but i thought i'd try and do one a bit different and also i'm, I'm getting on a bit i thought I'll, i'd write it all down just yeah. it might be fun remembering it while i still can preserve it now, yeah and explore those days again again yeah yeah which well. was very interesting very interesting so it. so let's talk a little bit about the period that's um, covered and and why this is volume one did you always have it in your mind that you were going to start and write this write about something you know oh, write it in two volumes it's meticulous. leave on a cliffhanger it's meticulously planned of course <laughs> um, no I, I i i just thought i'd just just write the story of my life. I thought what you do is you start at the beginning from the mm -hmm. moment of birth and then you just carry on writing until you got yeah. as close to the end as you could and then that, 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 that'd be your book done. <laughs> uh, and that was, kind of, that was kind of what happened uh, but I, unfortunately I wrote a thousand pages. I had, I had no mastery of um, or understanding of what a word counter was for. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a piece of software that I, I used to write. You, you, when you it's loads of little things and when you join them all together only then do you realise you've overshot by 700 pages <laughs> so, which is um, another three books which is, yeah <laughs> so I, I just thought someone would have come along and would have, you know, do a death bit of editing and it'd be fine it'd be fine but they said no we'll cut it in half uh, and um, yeah this is the first bit as you said up to the start of New Order um, and the next bit I mean the, the, the the sort of dividing line is is Gillian joining the band. That's yeah. that's that's the, mm -hmm. the next one. Mm -hmm. Volume two this time next year. Just out of interest, has that been written yet, or is that something? Yeah, of course, it's been written. It's <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the second four hundred <laughs> pages, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's complete. It's good, right? Kind yeah, of. it's just good. Um, so, in terms of taking us back to the root of the story and the root of your love of music and becoming a drummer and everyone that we, we know and love. Tell us a little bit about uh, your growing up and your early sort of musical formation because you kind of fell in love with pop music, but there were other things on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. Your fixed models, yeah, your yeah, dad's yeah, record collection. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, 
the Beatles were, 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 were everywhere, and I had two older girl cousins who were into pop music. And I just thought some of this for girls, <laughs> pop music, it's really some rubbish, and they all sing about love and all that, and I didn't like, I, I, did, I, thought, I thought that was ridiculous. You know, why can't people sing about spaceships? Or, you know, proper things that are interesting to me. Um, but they didn't. Well, they did, actually. I, I like Three Wheels on My Wagon, which is on the playlist, in the playlist in the book. Um, I, songs like that, I, 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 thought, I thought it was all a bit lovely dubby. Um, but something must have happened because the, the cousins played Beatles records. I, kind of, I, got, I got into it and I, I ended up getting a, a Beatles guitar, which was... Um, a mistake. I thought I thought this instrument would it would, would play itself. I, know, I, I, you know, I was very young, and I thought you just pick, picked it up and it'd go. Bring. It's been a hard, and that's all you had to do. Uh, but it just went. Ding, 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 ding. It had four strings. I didn't have any strings of proper guitar at all, and uh, it was. I was just disappointed, bitterly disappointed, particularly with the likenesses of the four Beatles. <laughs> they looked nothing like George, Paul, Ringo. Or John, um, yeah. So I, I was disillusioned with that aspect of, of pop. But but later on, um, later on uh, when I got to secondary school, uh, I went round to a friend of mine had, had an older brother, and you know, we were invited into his bedroom, which was a cave <laughs> with stacks of enemies. He, he, he decorated the walls. Uh, with you know uh, wallpaper sample books, mm. so it just stuck. Every, we had a, all different <laughs> kinds of wallpaper. He had every enemy from like 1970 neatly arranged, and he put he played Captain Beefheart and Frank Zappa, and, and I thought this is great. This is not lovely dumpy music yeah. at all. And, and then uh, yeah, they played Velvet Underground. And I thought this is my sort of stuff. It's so funky. yeah, I kind of. Uh, yeah, that's when I became very interested in music, and it started. Well, it started band mm -hmm. uh, at school. Um, so um, a load of us, uh, how many of us? About six or seven of us uh, decided we were going to be uh, a band called, as you said, the Sunshine Valley Dance Band, because that was a, a subversive name, <laughs> which we thought would get us a lot of bookings. <laughs> you know, you could, you could play anywhere with a name like that. Uh, so we turned, we, turned, we turned up and started looking back at it. Uh, we hadn't even got any instruments, but the problem was, well, we had a guitar, and um, I was the worst at playing it. And what happens with bands is the worst guitarist becomes a drummer, I found. So I was told that I was, uh, I was going to be the drummer, and I, I, I took my new role very seriously and started mithering to uh, get a drum kit, uh, which is a very serious business. If you, if you ever have children who want to play the drums, consider it. Give it a lot of thought. <laughs> Before acquiescing to their request to, uh, yeah, yeah. And, um, so I ended up with a drum kit, and uh, the first thing that I learned was how to move a drum kit. There's a lot of fiddling and screen and you know, and so I yeah there's, a, so there's a lot of carting about in the dream yeah, business. Yeah. It's funny that you uh, you say now and of course you reminisce in the book about the fact that it was sort of by default that you ended up becoming the drummer yeah. in that particular band uh, but you do detail before that uh, a sort of um, a trajectory of, of playing percussion instruments there was a, a That's triangle. That's right yeah yeah I mean yeah it's um infant school by the, 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 when they had the, the pretend band uh, I was I was fascinated by the tambourine uh, and I, I always wanted to play the tambourine because it, it looked pretty groovy um, <laughs> but they realised it was too dangerous an instrument for me so no Stephen you can play the triangle. That was it. Yeah, and I'm quite an accomplished triangle player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's never, it's never, it's never come in handy in, in any band that I've been in. But you know, I can, never seen I, I can right? play a triangle. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Um, I know drumming's. Uh, uh, drumming's great because it's one of the. Um, it's probably the first musical instrument. I mean, you don't need anything. Mm -hmm. You don't need anything to be a drummer. All, all you need is your hands, your body, and you can, you can. You can knock a rhythm out on anything. Yeah. And um, 
that's why that's why I, I, I like it really. I, I found that I'd tried playing musical instruments before, and I found it too difficult because you had to you had to learn how to tune up, and you had to learn what the notes were and things like that. And I, I just wanted to wanted to do it now. Yeah. Uh, and the immediacy of playing the drums was something that. Um, appeal to me. Yeah, yeah. you speak about that, the instant yeah. gratification. I, 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 just, I, I, just, I just found that I really enjoy doing yeah. it. It's sort of um, quite dist destructive and annoying and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. In the Sunshine Fellow Dance Band, yes. you speak of uh, basically just bringing out, literally bringing out people's mums, pots and pans. Uh, and yeah, that's right, the but you did crew. have a drum kit at that point, didn't you? Uh, eventually, yeah, yeah. But before that you got one. Uh, oh yeah, oh, oh right, okay, right, <laughs> Sooty, my, he's part of my downfall, yeah. I was very influenced by a small orange pop, Sooty, you know, was, Sooty. Sooty was my first gig, um, <laughs> it was, you know, it, it's, it's up there with Woodstock and then everything, <laughs> and we got to, I got taken by my cousins again and my auntie to see Sooty perform. Um, at, and then wet field just round the corner from my own house. It seemed like it was miles away, but it was just round the corner. And Sooty was there on the back, and, and he, uh, what Sooty used to play, he never, he never taught much, but he played, he played the um, xylophone. Yes. And at the end, there was the merch store, and um, I ended up coming away from that gig, the proud owner of Sooty xylophone, which lasted all of a few days, because it bang, 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 smashed that to bits. But that Christmas, uh, I was re rewarded uh, by um, yeah, my parents who bought me a Sooty drum kit. Um, yeah, that, that's, yeah, I really blame Sooty for a lot of troubles in my life. But the Sooty, yeah, the Sooty drum kit I thought was great. I was there on, um, Christmas Day, going bang, 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 on the sooty drum kit, and um, it was only little, yeah. mine so was I, and um, I can just remember uh, uh, one of the, it can only have been a brief pause, uh, the father turning to my mother and saying, that Harry Corbett wants shooting. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sort of dropped the t two little nearly broken sticks, and it was like you could have heard a pin drop, and just, turned to him and said, why, Dad? What's he done? <laughs> <laughs> I was really upset that Harry Corbett was like, I've got to be... Been... Had betrayed him. Yeah, yeah. So, Had done something terribly, terribly wrong. So I know, yeah, I, I, it, it, yeah, I, I misunderstood a lot of, a, a lot of adult yeah. conversation and, 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 and that just, it just struck me as, it was, I was, I couldn't understand what the hell it could have done. I mean, you, there was two bears. What were they going to do? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> particularly yeah. sweet because he wanted to open it one. Yeah. <laughs> it was going to be lost. Be yeah, but one. yeah, it was, it was it was a sort of drum kit, which, yeah. uh, strangely enough, by Boxing Day had, had disappeared. <laughs> uh, yeah, I never really discovered quite. Uh, but I can guess. I can guess now what yeah. happened. Wow. I never had a pair. Of, I have a pretty good idea where I, it went. I do love uh, the fact that in those ways you became a drummer despite some events. One was the city drum kit disappearing yeah. a day after you'd had it. Yeah. The other was a teacher of a certain oh, yeah. discipline telling you you had no sense of rhythm. Yeah, that was, that, that, that's right, yeah. Um, <laughs> my mother, my dad, my, my dad um, travelled a lot and in search of a social life, my mother, who had been a dancer, which is a good ballroom dancing. You can see where this is going to end up, can't you? Um, it didn't have She loved it, and she thought it was an, an essential skill that she would pass on to the rest of her family, which was basically me. And they said, uh, there was no question of it. Are you interested in ballroom dancing? Do you fancy giving it a try? No, we were, we were, we were taken <laughs> to the Alex Brown School of Dancing and enrolled kicking and screaming. And the worst thing about it was by that time, I had, I had got, I was beginning to get interested, oh. <laughs> beginning to get interested, oh, sorry, to interested in pop music. And the Alex, these lessons were uh, half past seven on Thursday, which if anybody <laughs> at the certain age would realise that was a, when Top of the Pops was on. So it's like Top of the Pops or boring, yeah, I'd rather watch Boring something. dancing. Yeah, uh, anyway, we, 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 it was confusing because the, 
it start the lady come up and you have to get a partner and it's like who's going to be the man or am I going to be the man or are you going to be the, the lady and it's like this is really confusing I can't understand what's going on um, and in the end I was just so crap at it um, the, the instructors just said got no sense of rhythm you've either got it or you haven't and unfortunately I haven't so I was quite pleased <laughs> to find that I was uh, I'm strong in that way. <laughs> that was the end. Then. That was the end for me. Yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never danced again, <laughs> as the song goes. As yet. Uh, well, yeah. Um, there's also a lovely sort of family resonance moving on from your mum, of course, sending yeah. you to ballroom dancing. You being given the city drum kit, and then you going on mass to an early gig together, like it's a family outing. Yeah, that was a formative. Yeah, well, yeah, after after the mate's bedroom. And listening to the Velvet Underground, I decided that this music had to be experienced live. There was no chance to see Frank Zappa because he broke his leg. Uh, and they were American anyway, uh, so I wanted someone British. And uh, I was very taken with Hawkwind, uh, particularly that record In Search of Space, which is, was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and purely by chance, <laughs> That um, they were they were playing in this, uh, was it March 1972? They were playing in Manchester at the Free Trade Hall, mm -hmm. supported by Status Quo. And um, <laughs> what a gig! Well, it was a great gig. Yeah. It, was, it was a great gig. I have to say, I can't let's go and see a band. I want to go and see a band. And they said no. And eventually they said, right, okay, we'll come and see one of your bands if you come and see one of my bands. Fine. So uh, yeah, March we all set off from. Um, our house in Macclesfield, dressed like we were going to a Masonic dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Mum, my dad, and my sister to go and see Hawkwind. In the <laughs> they had no idea. They really had no idea. Uh, 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 status quo finished, and then Mum took the cotton wool out of his as they made their way to the bar and said, "Are the next lot going to be this lad?" <laughs> <laughs> Be fine, be fine, and uh, yeah, I don't know if any of you have ever seen Hawkwind, but Hawk, they, um, at that time there was, uh, it was, uh, it was a lot of day glow, there was a lot of strobe lights, it was incredible, Lemmy was playing bass, uh, which was absolutely fantastic, uh, it was a total psychedelic experience, enlivened by the presence of the Go Go Dancer Stacia, and at the moment, <laughs> Stacia, a topless dancer, yeah, yeah. appeared yeah. on the stage and it, the, the, my mother just looked at my sister and they went, wham, straight out there. My dad hung around for <laughs> <laughs> Until he realised that uh, he really had to, you know, if he was going to salvage anything of the night, he'd better, he'd, he'd better be a retreat and I was just a gog. Uh, it was the best thing I'd ever seen. It, it's like, right, this is what yeah. I want to do you now. Formative. Rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was a kind of formative moment in terms of yeah, thinking of you as actually making it, um, this, is a, this is a physical thing that I can do. It's not just an abstract thing that I'm hearing on records. It's something I'm, I'm seeing on stage. I'm seeing a drummer on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, see, well, I was seeing a racket on stage. <laughs> a, 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 like a total immersive experience and just like whoa blew, blew me away yeah. uh yeah it was it was fantastic and I, I became addicted to going to concerts uh like within three weeks uh i, I managed to sneak, sneak out of the house with my friend and we went to see david bowie uh and like seeing david bowie you know, it, was, it was like this is incredible mm. you know this is really it and you're still playing drums all the time at this point as well? Was that, had that just become part of your kind of day-to-day -day life? Not on stage, oh, yeah, obviously, yeah, but this is just the, 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 One of the conditions which I'll find, you find you impose on your children when they want to play the drums. <laughs> just, when you've got to have lessons, because they knew that I, yeah. would, I would learn anything. No, I was just like, really, but uh, I said, okay. And so that, that was, that, that was the, the catch, that I, I had to have proper lessons. So yeah, I was, I was yeah, I did lessons every, every week. And then, even the guy, it was a lovely man, Mr Greenwood, realised that I was a hopeless case. And that, that, that we'd just spend about 10 minutes doing actual proper stuff that you were supposed to learn. And the rest of the time, it was just a, 
rambling chants as she went into <laughs> playing the cymbals and being played the songs. And it, yeah, we loved it. I think it's interesting what drummers were speaking to you even at that point. Mm. There's a lot of an influence even when you're going to your drumming lessons yeah. from, uh, especially from from sort of German bands, from band, bands like Kraft oh, yeah, and yeah. now. What do you think it was about them even at that point that was just drawing you towards that, I guess, style and that attitude? I, I mean, I, I liked um, German music. I like I, I like Cam mm. and Noi, and the the thing that I liked about them, I found, was the very um, the motoric beat. I like mm. I like the rhythms that they did. They're very very similar. Getting Jackie is like the, out of Cam is like the best drummer mm. ever, uh, and I, I just like the way the the, the the rhythm evolved and everything, and. I figured that, that, that I would. I wanted to play drums like that, mm. and I didn't want to be Buddy Rich. Yeah. That was that was too much like. And it was too much like hard work, and he, he looked like he was in pain a lot of the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, the no, I, I, I wanted to be mm. yeah one of those guys, a German drummer. So you're drumming, you're kind of trying it in bands a little bit, and yeah. this and that and whatever, and then... Yeah, unfortunately, none of the bands were looking for that kind of drummer. Yeah, they, I mean, they wanted they're body, lost. They wanted Biddy Rich. <laughs> they, they, they didn't want to be steered in a direction of none. No, no, and then one day you go to a gig, you buy a fanzine, and yeah. there is a, an incredible yeah. advert in it. Tell that, us about that. That's, well, I got, well, new punk had just started, and um, everybody was so oh, I was like, oh, it's terrible, all this punk music. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Um, so I, went, I, I got to see Blondie on television at the Free Trade Hall again. I spent a lot of time there. And um, in the corner, there's a guy selling fanzines. I got the fanzine. And got, went to the back, and it's got, yeah, drummers wanted for bands. And there were three, a list of three bands uh, who all wanted a drummer. And I suddenly realised that I, I potentially had a in demand skill. Uh, there was <laughs> there was a, a band called Warsaw, they were top of the list. There was a, a band called V2, who it, it turned out had actually been to school with a couple of those uh, guys. And then there was another band who you've probably never heard of called The Fall. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's Russian roulette really. <laughs> It could, it, it could have easily gone either way, but look, <laughs> Carl Burns is a much better drummer than me, and uh, it, he, made, he made a go of it with the fall, mm -hmm. eventually, uh, and um, I, I just sort of thought, yeah, but I've got to come to Manchester, haven't I? I was getting a bit lazy, and uh, a couple of weeks later, I walked, I walked past the music uh, shop in Mac Macclesfield, <laughs> And there was notice in the window, and it said "Drummer Wanted" again <laughs> for local new wave bands, local mm. Warsaw. And I thought this is all right. I won't have to mm. go too far because I was sick of going to re yeah, turning up for rehearsals and yeah. and to count the gear, gear back. So it's, it's not too far. Mm -hmm. uh, and phoned Ian, so I phoned up, and that's how I met Ian. When you're going back to that, you obviously write about it in the book, making that phone call. Mm. Did you keep diaries at the time? Did you have any documentation, or are you just, I mean, are you just relying on what must have been a very sort of formative time in terms of meeting these people? Like, do you just kind of remember how it went, or did you write diaries at the time? Did you I, keep any records? No, no, I never really kept a diary. I mean, I kept a lot of stuff. I think I obviously kept, I read a lot of music papers, yeah. kept all that. Yeah. Because um, you never throw that away. No. Uh, but I, I didn't. I didn't write down. Uh, keeping a diary just seemed a very mundane thing to do. Because mm. we used to do it at school. <laughs> yeah, we at primary school. You know, you had to write that's the first thing you did in the diary. Mm. And I, even then, it was mundane. I just took to telling enormous lies. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, my father agreed to take us on an aeroplane ride uh, round the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Like that, and it's, it just, it's yeah. like I can't put the truth. It just be yesterday I watched telly and went to bed, and I just thought I'm lining it up a bit with yeah. some enormous lies. And I've opened day, my parents used to come home and they were hysterical at the, the, the things <laughs> that I'd said they'd promised me. Your fictions, yeah, my fictions. You were always a novelist, yeah, yeah, yeah right? nearly, it was nearly. Always here. So, anyway, no diaries, no, <laughs> no diaries. I always got one for Christmas but I never got to the end. So your recollection of 
I'm wondering about, you make the phone call to Ian. Yeah. How did that go? And then how did you come to then meet the rest of the band? Especially the band? Well, I just, I, I, um, I rang him, I rang him up, and he was just like really, really nice. Yeah, no, fine. I expect, I half expected to say, oh no, 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 drummer shortage is over now. It was just a flash in the pan. <laughs> we fixed up now. So. Yeah. But he said, no, come round to my house at half past six at tea time. So I just went round and um, met, met Ian, met Debbie, and it, it, it's, it really, they were really interested. The band seemed as he described them, quite well organised. They'd done, they'd done a lot of gigs, they had, they had a cassette of, of songs which he played with. They were, they were all, they'd played with Johnny Thunders, they played with Penetration, you know, they, they, you know, they, they were, they were organised. Um, then they said, well, um, we can't do anything at the minute because uh, Bernard and Peter, the, the other people, are on holiday. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all right. We've got every bonds entitled to a holiday. And then he said, uh, so I'll give you a ring in a couple of weeks. So he rang us in a couple of weeks. So they're back now. Do you fancy coming to a, a rehearsal? Yeah, yeah, okay. So packed up, uh, got my drums in the car. I could drive by now. <laughs> Went off, uh, picked him up, and he said, all right, where are we going? He said, strange ways. <laughs> <laughs> strange ways, the prison. He says, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm meeting him at strange ways. So I thought, have they been on holiday? <laughs> and, and I was kind of, what am I getting myself into? Yeah. I was a little bit worried about it. And then um, we're outside um, Strange Ways Prison and sort of, what the hell's going on? And then um, this Mark II Jack pulls up, which is the Mark II's like a Sweeney car. Yeah. Mark II Jack. I don't like the way this is going. This is going on. <laughs> That's Hucky's car. And I'd never heard the name Hooky before. I wasn't Peter and Bernard. Yeah, it was just Peter and Bernard. I mean, I thought well, there probably might be a phone pan or something. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, then this, then this, this Jack driven by someone called Hooky turns up, and uh, he got out. And uh, yeah, there's there's Hooky, and he's got a beard. I thought, well, he must be Peter and Bernard's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard it, uh, turned up on his motorbike and then he, it, it was explained that Peter and Oki were, 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 were one and the same person. <laughs> I was getting on, they were not getting the mistake. Yeah. Anyway, then we turned to form the convoy um, and headed for um, Crumsall, where we just set up in this um, community centre, started making a racket, and it, it, it just worked. Mm. It just worked. You're like, most. Most of the time when I'd, I'd done that with other bands, you, you got that you did eight bars in, it was like, hang on, mm. not like that. Uh, or usually it was, can you play a bit quieter? <laughs> but um, no, we, 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 we just clicked kind of pretty much straight away. And they never said, you've got the job, lad. Yeah. No, no, they just, well, right, okay. Macclesfield, that's a greaser town, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, that so was that, was it. It, that was it. I, I was in, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that I had a car as well was useful because I could take it, you know. Uh, I think that was probably what swung it on. <laughs> <laughs> More than any percussive ability. Um, you speak about the sort of memories you have of uh, writing with Joy Division yeah. and the way that songs that came to light and of course then albums mm. came to light and it does seem to be quite a sort of a collaborative sort of process oh, was, yeah. yeah from the off right yeah. although you kind of there were songs there and you came in but from the minute yeah. you were there you were absolutely part of it right in terms of yeah no yeah. no the, the, the way that the band, band worked that was it was totally democratic mm. um we it, everybody was given that that was the way uh, that we you know, thought it should be, but it wasn't like you're the front one, you do this, you do that. We did, no, no, we did every, everything together. And um, it was just brilliant writing uh, songs with Ian because he, um, well, it was very quiet. He just, he'd just sit in the corner with a plastic bag. Mm -hmm. But he had a plastic bag full of lyrics. Yeah. So you could yeah. just start, you know, we just start jamming a, a riff. And he'd, he'd pull out a piece of paper and just start singing stuff over the top. And it's like, yeah, we've written a song here. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. really, it was, uh, it was great. Yeah. It, it, 
it really was that, 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 that's the way we, we did everything. I mean, there was a bit of, hang on, wait a minute, uh, you play four of them and I play two of these. And that, that was about as far as it went, but we kind of all, we all worked it out between us. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there was, only, um, there was only Bernard who was gifted with the ability of being able to tune a guitar. <laughs> so if Bernard didn't say, we just had to wait for Bernard, which is like, Ah, it's a lot. <laughs> in bands, you're always waiting for somebody. Yeah. yeah. So it, and they couldn't do anything until someone came to. Yeah. I had a go once. Well, after me, Beatles guitar. It's just yeah, that was the demise of you, Beatles yeah, guitar, wasn't it? So it tuned it, 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 it broke. broke. It. Yeah. So I left it. Yeah. It, it's it's interesting looking back because obviously now, um, in the in the kind of book working up to unknown pleasures, yeah. music goes on to closer. But just to get to that point at which there is something which is, you know a genuinely iconic, I think you refer to it as the indie dark side of the moon in the book. Yeah. But I mean, I think yeah, for a lot of people, it's like, it's, you know, it's seismic, it's more than that, what mm. it means to, what it means to so many people. It's huge and it's kind of definitive in that way. Mm. And yet I love the fact that both the name Joy Division and the title Unknown Pleasures were by no means always the first titles for either of those things. Joy Division weren't necessarily no, going to no, be Joy Division, right? No, we had to change our name because we got told we'd never get a gig in London called Walsall, so we'll uh, change the name now. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the out of town torpedoes, that was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Lockheed's was the Slaves of Venus, as you probably already slaves know. Slaves of Venus. Um, <laughs> I still like Sunshine Valley Dance, but I was putting that one for <laughs> on a regular basis. Uh, and we, we, we just ended up, you know, Joy Division was in the book that we read, and mm -hmm. that, that, that kind of stuck. Once it's and, down. Um, down. Yeah, Unknown Pleasures wasn't going to be called Unknown Pleasures. I can't remember what it was. It, it was um, one of the alternative titles was Convulsive Therapy. Oh, it might have been Compulsive Therapy, we can't, uh, but it was, it was the, the title was decided by um, the democratic voting process, which was, because um, Rob was managing us and he had the, uh, the casting vote, so it was four votes for Unknown Pleasures and one vote for Convulsive or Compulsive <laughs> Therapy. Um, I don't know who voted, no, probably me. <laughs> and it could have been, I can't, I can't remember, I've just got the, the, the four, oh no, it just four, convulsive, or compulsive therapy, one. Um, yeah, but I think I, I think we made the right decision in the end. Democracy prevailed. That's right, exactly, yeah. you learned something. Um, I also love the fact that you, uh, you know, if you, if you know the sort of legend of Factory and Joy Division and New Order and all of it, it's easy to sort of assume or imagine that the magic was happening all the time and everybody was totally into it and Tony Wilson was behind it and Martin Hannett was just like bringing the best out of you in the studio the whole time. It doesn't really come across. No, no, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like that at Yeah, all. yeah, you, um, were, you were far from delighted with some of the... Uh, no, no, I mean, working, working with Martin Hannett was uh, always an interesting experience. Uh, Martin's <laughs> philosophy on... Um, Approach the psychology of production was the job of the producer is to weave a complex web of tensions in the studio, and he was very good at it. Um, yeah, particularly in the way that he went about recording the drums, which was basically, you know, I'd never, I'd no idea. I had no idea. He had this idea and he said, it wasn't for every song, I've got to say that. It, it, that certain songs, he just had this idea. And it, it, what it entailed is having to play every... Yeah, when you play a drum, you play a drum kit, you play them all together. But now he wanted me to do it one at a time. So you'd just be doing that for, mm. like, an hour. All right, we've got that now. And you'd just be doing the snare drum for another hour. And then you'd do the bass drum and then... Uh, so everything took like four or five times longer than it, it, it would normally take, but it, yeah, <coughs> added to that, there was the marking time of faffing about, of coming in and giving you useful hints like faster but slower, <laughs> <laughs> yellower. <laughs> um, just, you know, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, Martin. And after a bit, he did say, oh, yeah, you, you agreed with him. So we were, <laughs> yeah, we were on the same sort of 
plain. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I'd no, I'd no idea what he said. I, I thought, I thought he was, he, he was punishing me for being a terrible drummer some of the time. Um, but you know, we 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 just went along with it. Mm. We, we, we went along. And um, at the end, of, uh, we only recorded unknown pleasures in about three weekends because Martin was doing John Cooper Clark mm. um, at Strawberry. Uh, and at the end, it was, it, it, no, we hated it. I liked it because I'd spent that long recording the drums. I wasn't going to turn around and say, <laughs> bloody hell. You're invested. I'll, I'll have to do it again <laughs> if, if, yeah. I, if, if, if I didn't like it. But uh, yeah, and I think, I think the thing was uh, that Martin did something quite remarkable with the, set, the sound of the band. He, he like gave it um, a depth um, that, that, that if it had been left to us, We'd, 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 it, it would have been kind of more like the Stooges, probably a lot, a lot more. But Martin gave it a, a, an atmosphere. He, he took the music, and it sounds when you listen to it, it sounds like it's coming from somewhere, mm. and you, you can you can visualise a place. I can yeah. when I don't know about anybody else. When I listen to it, I can mm. see somebody playing. It's not us that's playing. It's not me that's playing. It's just the music seems to come from mm. somewhere else. And it's Martin that, 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 that did that. God knows, I don't think he knew how he did it, really. Um, but it, it's quite remarkable. And it's, it, it, it's 40 years old today, and I think it still sounds um, modern. It's still, mm. You put it on today, and it still sounds um, fresh and unlike anything else, yeah. really. But. We didn't like it. No, you yeah. like yeah. yeah. well, see, bloody dog. Sounds <laughs> like a guitar sound. Like to be fair, Ian, Ian wasn't. Ian quite liked it. I quite liked it. Okie and Bernard were very unhappy. <laughs> um, the baby, basically, there was, there was no more time. There was no more money. Thank God. Yeah, I know. To do it again. <laughs> Otherwise, it, it, you know, we do it. History could have been a very different thing. Yeah. It's interesting. You talking about that idea of sort of almost feeling removed from it a little bit now. Yeah, 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 and I feel very removed from um, it now. And also, um, obviously, especially with Joy Division and uh, the great Rob Gretton, of course, being your manager and kind yeah. of being, and, and, and Tony Wilson being kind of like anti-marketing. Oh, you totally. Know, you weren't going to be having any uh, sooty drum kits or beautiful no, guitars no, no, in, in no, Joy no, Division. No, 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 no gimmicks or anything um, like that. So you kind of didn't have an image, except of course you did, and there were certain images that then became sort of set in stone yeah. as what, what, what Joy Division especially were. They're in black and white. Mm. They're very austere. Yeah. Um, and now they are sort of removed from your personalities yeah. and the music. Was part of writing the book also to try and connect with your real memories of yeah. what that experience no, was? No, it was. It was exactly because of the, uh, as time went on, uh, Joy, Joy Division have become something totally removed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great. It's fantastic. But uh, they, they, they do exist in... They are slightly referred to the third person yeah. um, in a in a black and white world where it's it's very cold uh, and we're, we're, we're reading Dostoevsky uh, yeah. Yeah, by a candle uh, to keep warm. Uh, whereas it, there's nothing in, in actuality, we were nothing like that at all. We were just a bunch of lads. Um, we very we took music very seriously. Because music in the 70s was a very serious business. We took music very seriously, but anything else, it was, uh, we, we weren't serious about anything, really. Yeah. There, was, uh, there was just ridiculous betting, <coughs> ridiculous jokes and things like that. And it, 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 it bothers me a bit that um, people have this idea of Ian yeah. uh, always sitting with his head in his hands like that, <laughs> which he did for one picture most yeah. of the time. Um, I mean, he was very, very ill by that time, but the Ian I remember was, um, was um, happy most of the time. He smiled a lot more uh, than he didn't, and, you know, did a lot of practical jokes and stuff like that. It, 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 was, it, it was fun, and, and I, ju I just wanted to try and get that across, that we weren't... Um, and we, 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 it, from day one, as soon as Unknown Pleasures came out, 
people got that idea about us, that, 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 that they heard it and thought that the music was us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, we made it, but there's, there's, there's this connection between you that you must be that kind of person. And we, we weren't, when, when we weren't that kind of person, then people got annoyed. Didn't fit. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't like it at all. And they, they all think about, we, we haven't got an image, you know. And they said, they say, you, you sound like Manchester. And that's ridiculous. How can you sound like a city? That's ridiculous. But now I can, I can understand what they were getting at. Yeah, that, but yeah, yeah we did. And the, 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 the architecture and the place kind of went through and it, came, it did come out in the, in the music, but it was totally, uh, it was totally subconscious. Mm, yeah. No, I think it's, it's particularly lovely to read about uh, Ian and think about him because we don't see him like that. We don't see no. images of him, even smiling, you know, no, it's no, not no. something we're aware of. We didn't ever see him in real life. We're lucky enough to, you know, be able to see you and, and Bernard and, and Peter and, you know, see the characters there. Yeah. Ian's not been afforded that, so I think it's lovely no. to, to sort of bring them to No, no that's, that's one of the things that it, it's, it's a real shame that people never really mm. got to know. Got to know. The, the thing that I, I like is, uh, a few months ago, some pictures uh, turned up on Twitter of uh, Ian at Works Do. Mm. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, he's, so he's, he's got a fabulous, he's, <laughs> he's brilliant. And it's kind of, yeah, that's, that, yeah. that, 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 that is Ian. Right, okay. that's, that, that, that's kind of how he was. He was just mm. having a laugh with the girls from the office. Yeah. And that, that, that's kind of how he was most of the time. I mean, he, he did totally transform when he went on stage. Uh, he did, he did turn <coughs> um, something fantastic, something he was just like full of, full of energy, which was great. Uh, and again, you look at it, you think, well, that, you know, that's what it must be like. Mm. Uh, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't at all like yeah. that. Most of the time, you know, like, the, the first gig, that I just couldn't believe it because I just thought, oh God, have we got to go on? Because I, I would see him do was just read from a notebook. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, that sure? and he, you know, yeah. just, we're not going to get any. And he's like, wow. <laughs> it's just a bundle of manic energy. And it, right. it was fantastic. I mean, and it was what you what you want. Yeah. Because like. Bernard didn't move, and okay, when the very first uh, started, he didn't move very much, so it was just, Ian was doing everything. Yeah, a lot of it. I think that's what's lovely as well, it's a kind of oral or oral history of, of the band. It's yeah. a memory of, uh, and this is just the first volume, of, um, of many Beloved Joy Division songs sort of coming to light, yeah. um, and also the experiences in the studios. It's also uh, a love story in a way, of course, to Ian as friends, yeah. but uh, we can't not mention uh, Gillian Gilbert, who plays a very early role, and then uh, of course we'll carry on way into oh, the yeah. future. But that's lovely as well. You have some uh, lovely sort of uh, archives or artifacts in it, including miserable postcards. Miserable to postcards, Gillian. home phones from the doors. <laughs> yes, my romantic <laughs> postcard writing. Yes, that's right. Yeah. If only I could understand German. <laughs> I was trying to. Yeah, you just. Trying to ring up, mm. and it's just like, why are they speaking English? Mm. <laughs> Ridiculous. I had no money anyway, so yeah, I took to writing postcards. The interesting thing is that, uh, as you pointed out to me, that I bought a postcard in uh, Rotterdam, but I didn't send it until I got. No, I bought the postcard in Eindhoven, but I didn't post it until I got to Germany. <laughs> uh, so I'd have been carrying it around me for three days. <laughs> But there'll be more of that in the second volume. Oh yeah, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. There's a lot more of Gillian. I mean, we yeah. met Gillian um, at a Joy Division rehearsal. Yeah. She was in a band just mm -hmm. down the end of the corridor, and she'd been in the, the Mac Express. Wanted to start a new wave band, mm -hmm. and um, I stand from the Mac Express, and uh, would you like a lift home? <laughs> and the car paid off yet yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> Get a car, yeah, well, there was there was me, there was Ian, there was the drums, and Gillian and the sisters all crammed in the back. Luxury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then she played with Joy Division. Then she, got, then she played. Uh, yeah, when there was an unfortunate accident involving a beer bottle, which um, damaged the guitarist's hand. Who actually was Ian on that song because it was I remember nothing. And uh, we need a guitarist quick. Oh, Gillian. Steps into the breach, and yes, so that's, that's where it started. That's where it started, yes. and the rest to be continued. The rest to be continued. To be continued. Yeah, yes. I know, I can't wait. Thank Next you. month.
end of the next March. Did you say next, that? Yeah. Not that I'm hanging on your every no, date. No, 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 don't, no, don't, 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 don't quote me. But yeah, it's early, early next year. Thereabouts. Um, in the meantime, yeah. I think there's a roving mic. If you have any questions, after which is the plex, the lovely. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, if you would like to raise your hand, then there's a oh, oh, there's 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 yeah. And when he went around interviewing all the main protagonists um, to build the story, because at this point he didn't know what the story was going to be, yeah. um, Peter Hook said that the most interesting character in the whole of the story was you. Well, that's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. Well, there you go. I thought I'd tell you that. But yeah, that's, 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 that's very nice. No, we yeah. actually said that. But well, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, the, the, the biggest loss I think that when you when you went for Joy Vision and to New Order and after movement is that you seem to drop the toms. Yeah. And and, and, and to be honest, you know, if you're like myself, when you want these guys like to be the phantom drummer and you're working yeah. around the phantom kick, yeah. and then you, you start to do that a lot on movement. Yeah. And the next thing is you went, they went. So yeah. Stephen on, onto the toms. Well, yeah, it was a conscious decision. It was a conscious decision. I decided to do. Um, Something different and not not playing the toms seem to be because I did it a lot. I did it a lot, even on movement. Um, yeah, so I thought I'll try not doing that because like new order initially at the very start was just defined by things that we weren't. So we were, you know we weren't going to get into the singer and we were going to be something different, but we didn't know what it was. And my two penny was was uh, I wasn't going to play the toms. But I'm doing it now since you brought it up. <laughs> 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 there was some, a gentleman over here with his hand up as well. Stephen, you've been involved for a lot more than 40 years in the music industry. You've seen a lot of changes in technology, particularly as new order we've forward. Is there any particular things looking back that you think, wow, that was incredible, you know, a change in technology that allowed you to do things, or you're on the electronic front, or...? Um, I mean, the, 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 the thing was, we were, we were lucky uh, working with Martin, because Martin was very into cutting, cutting edge technology. He could see the way things were going with uh, computers, and uh, you know, they, they go on for hours about the price of memory, memory's going to get this and that, and so on. Well, who cares about that? But he, 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 he was right about a, a lot of things. And because of him, I became interested in technology, and I, 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 I could see that, um, that computers had, would be a big thing in music. Uh, and I used to bore people rigid with, oh yeah, you get computers, you're going to have a computer. Oh, do me a favour, yeah, what, what, what do we want a computer for? Um, and that's in book two, <laughs> how I try to, <laughs> I turn up with a computer and try to impress people and they, they, they just play, ding, 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 <laughs> it's, it's like a fairground organ. Um, yeah, I mean, that um, seeing that technology evolve and the uh, early uh, drum machines and sequences, I, I, I thought was great. But really, I, I knew it was going to be big, but I had no idea. I couldn't. I couldn't imagine Spotify. I couldn't imagine you know, streaming music. I thought that was just, if you, that just seemed ridiculous. And that, you, know, you could watch a movie on a computer now. Um, it, 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 in fact, the whole thing, uh, everything in music now, uh, involves some form of digital technology to the point where it's actually becoming um, a bit of an obstacle. In, in, in some ways, you know, you have to think your way round it. When when it when it's first started for me, uh, and it was quite primitive, 
you you understood exactly what the machine did, and you were you know you like the DM extra machine. Um, you knew how to do everything on it because it couldn't do very much, and um, it, you know you, you could express yourself through that. Now it's um, yeah the manuals are just massive. I also remember you seem to use some quite obscure equipment like the Octave Voyager. You know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We did. Yeah, I've. Um, yeah, I, I brought one of those back from, from the dead. I've got that. Got that um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's amazing. I've loved, I've loved, there was only us and a few other people using them. got great, really good synthesizers. They were miles ahead of the time. Uh, and uh, yeah, they broke down quite a lot as well. <laughs> and now it's fixed. Anyone questions? Come on. Um, it struck me that over the past few years you've um, done like three, maybe more than three now, uh, projects that have involved focusing on the past quite intensively, so you've done your books, the movement box set, which yeah. goes, you've done Power, Corruption and Lies Next, and there were the fantastic shows in Manchester yeah. in 2017. Um, so I was wondering, when you're actually kind of consciously looking back like that, um, and you're reminded of why you did things and maybe what was influencing you at the time and what your energy was at the time. Is there anything that you take from that to go forward to now? Are you reminded, like you're almost like inspired by how you started again? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, uh, I mean, going back to when we, when we um, did music complete, when we started doing that, we uh, got the idea that it might be a good thing to just write, just do a couple of songs, just write them and then go and play them at gigs, which is what we, what we did when we were Joy Division. Yeah, you'd, you'd write a song and you'd think it was such a good song, you wanted to play it to people uh, and, it, and you would gauge people's reaction to it and you would get, you would get something from from playing it, and instead of going into a studio and writing an album where it's in a bit of a vacuum, you know, you're just doing it to please yourself. Um, we, we, we got we got that. I mean, it is doing the MIF things was uh, very it was very challenging, uh, and it was great a, a great experience. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. it was really good. Um, but um, yeah, unfortunately, Pete, the, 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 there's, you, sometimes you have to revisit the past to go forward, which is kind of what you were saying. So I, I guess I'm agreeing with you that you, you do. And maybe we will go forward at some point, but after the next box set. <laughs> <laughs> I like a box set. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. Christmas is a vinyl box set. There's a gentleman behind you. Hi there, Steve. Hi. You all right? I was uh, with them with inside and outside tensions in a band where you worried when Julian joined the order. Uh, Is she in the audience? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's behind you. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're always behind you. Um, get, I mean, getting Julian in was, uh, was Rob's idea and it was the perfect solution to to our problems. It was so obvious that why we hadn't thought of it before um, that we didn't want a singer, and none of us Bernard couldn't sing and play guitar. So we'll just get someone in who could play guitar. And Jimmy had played with us already, and just, we we knew her. I knew her quite well, and you know, she, <laughs> she, she came to the gigs quite a lot, so we, we all knew her, and she was, um, it was a very difficult time, it was a very difficult time for, for all of us in the very early days of New Order, and Gillian was a bit of a, um, a bit of a calming influence, I think, yeah. Oh. Have you ever argued? <laughs> Have you ever argued? <laughs> argued? <laughs> oh, very 
Irish. They thought, we can argue for England. <laughs> and you face a, you know, one, an argument. No. <laughs> no, with you. <laughs> oh. no, well, there you go. There's a, there's a gentleman at the back, so for raise hand. <laughs> Hi Stephen. Hi. I was just wondering, you've got a gig at George O'Brien. Yeah. A gig at Bristol. Yeah. A gig at Portsmouth. <laughs> We're going to get a Glasgow gig. The what? The Barrel again. That, that's where the, uh, the... I can remember Bernard did Wooden Heart at Barrel Lands after the show. Um, there was... We were going to do one. Uh, but... Uh, honestly, getting... Fucking gigs these days is again the, like the, the computer technology. <laughs> when you when you were starting off, you could book a gig next week, and now it's gear planners and all this lot. And we, we, there was one in the works, but it just it, people couldn't make it happen on the right day and, and that lot, uh, which was a shame. But it would be yeah, it's a travesty. Well, desperate to see you. Yeah, we should come back. Come back and do it as well. Um, no, no. I mean, it, it, it was that close. It didn't, it didn't happen. It will do. On that note. Oh, there's one more. Let's go. There's a lot. There's another hand. There's another hand. Go on. It's not moving too swiftly along from that practical promise of a glass. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Yeah. Um, I'm actually sitting next to my partner oh. because he's been a joy division you're the friend for so many years. And um, I'm actually going to divorce him. Can you take him home for you? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to foster him? Is <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Is that yes? Is it, is it, is it, is it, you can learn. You can learn. Six hours. Yeah. Is it? There's another one. Mainly for you, Julius. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming to Glasgow, it's always good to see you here. Thank you. Uh, my question is, if Ian had still been alive, uh, which direction would have Joy Division gone in? Would it have continued in, the, uh, in terms of the, the style of the music? Uh, you were obviously talking about technology and computers. Uh, do you think they would have gone down the sort of path that New Order went down, or do you think they went down a different road? Uh, it... <laughs> To quote Martin Hallett, it would have been the same but different. Um, <laughs> we, we, I mean, we, Ian, I mean, we're all into craft work, and we were uh, on closer, we were getting into using synthesizers and, and drum machines. So, had Joe Division continued, it, it probably would have gone more like that. Maybe not quite. Um, it wouldn't have been four on the floor because I would have carried on doing the tongs. It would have got more electronic. It would have got more electronic, in it, in it, but probably in a more experimental, kind of atmospheric way. Um, we could have become Radiohead. Who <laughs> knows? <laughs> no. Thanks. <laughs> Did I see another hand down? Oh, one here, is there? One up there. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, my son's just getting into music. Oh. <laughs> You've got a playlist at the back of it. There's a playlist at the back of it. What does he want to play? Well, what instrument? You can mine it. <laughs> what I've said to him is chapter one, verse one is the stone roses. Right. But what should he do? What should he do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. Yeah. laughs> I, I kind of like, uh, I'd, Early Stooges, the first, the first Stooges LP, um, because like that, that's really, um, yeah, that's really energy. Um, find me fine albums. Oh, love forever changes, um, because that's, um, well, just because it's the best album ever made, probably. Mm -hmm. So that's that's probably good. Yeah. Obviously, not no place, just because that's a good one as well. Um, can you can you one of your own? 
anything by a can. Tego Mago by a can. Yeah. Uh, and you probably need something. Um, Chair and Mass Replica by Cats in Beef. <laughs> you young people. <laughs> you tell me, you, you play that. <laughs> yeah. So, that's your five. That's, uh, yeah, that's one, one of them. Two of them are doubles, so technically that's seven. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for money every single time. I'm not saying single time we're going to have to. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, but, Stephen Moby. Yeah. Signing his marvelous book, Volume One, for now. Um, thank you so much for coming this evening. Thank you for your questions. If you have any others, I'm sure you'd be happy to answer them outside. And a huge thank you to you.